Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's. I'm so glad that you've decided to join us on this Easter morning, the most joyous day in the Christian year as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. If you have a bulletin that was mailed to you, this would be a great time for you to go get that. Or if you have a prayer book and want to follow along in the service, you can get that out in front of you. Um, also, if you, if you have any prayer requests, there's a, there's a form, I think it's right about up here, that you can click on and, and fill out and ask the clergy to pray for you. And if you're visiting with with us. If it's your first time with us at St. Luke's digitally or in person or any other way, welcome. We're so glad you're here. I'd ask you to also fill out this, this form and let us know your name and your contact information so we can thank you for being with us. There will be another opportunity for you to fill out this form later in the service if prayers occur to you as we go through this worship. But in the meantime, Happy Easter. I'm so glad you're with us and God bless you. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected and have become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted, we will rejoice and be glad in.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Mary showed up with the terrible news on that first Easter morning. The body of Jesus was gone. As John ran to the tomb after hearing this, he was overcome with agony, with despondency. But as he peered into the empty tomb, for the first time in the entire Gospel of John, we read that he believed. Despair turned to hope, not because he understood the resurrection, he didn't fully understand what had happened yet, but because he believed in Jesus Christ. He placed his trust, his hope, his faith in Jesus. In that moment, hope became real and despair evaporated like the morning fog. The question for you and me is what rules in your life? Is it hope or is it despair? Angel Granados Diaz was a Park Rose High School student. Despair ruled in his life, especially after a recent breakup with a girlfriend. He began to retreat from family and friends. Darkness, despondency, despair began to provide the filter through which he saw everything in his life. Soon, despair led to isolation, and then anger, and then violent thoughts, and then hopelessness, until he finally decided that his only solution was to take his own life. A few years before the first Easter morning, a few years 
before John went to this empty tomb, his story really begins. In the first chapter of John's Gospel, we're told that John the disciple was first a follower of John the Baptist, the first cousin of Jesus. And one day John the disciple was standing there and Jesus walked by and John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. John the Baptist may have even told his disciple John to go follow Jesus, to become a part of this man's ministry. John the Baptist said, he must increase, I must decrease. He may have said, go follow him. But for whatever reason, John the disciple became a follower of Jesus. And do you know what we're told happened in his heart when that, in that moment? Do you know what we're told happened in his soul when he decided to follow Jesus? We're not told that anything happened at all. You see, he decided to follow Jesus because he was curious, he was intrigued, but there's no indication that he was really changed. And can you blame John? How many of us do the same? We show up at church week after week, year after year, but are we really changed? Are, are our lives built with the, the bricks of fear and the mortar of despair, or are our lives now built on a foundation of hope that changes everything else in our lives? Are we changed? At the Last Supper, John again was present. And not only was he present, but we read he was sitting right next to Jesus. That Last Supper was a traditional Passover Seder, much like the, the Passover Seders that our Jewish brothers and so sisters celebrate to this day. And the tradition at a Seder meal is that the host, that would be Jesus in this case, would take a piece of unleavened bread, of matzah bread, much like the, the bread we use for communion each week, and he would fracture it, he would break it in half. And then it would be placed in a, in a white fair linen, much like your grandmother's finest linens, and it would be carefully folded up. And then the host would go to hide this bread in some unknown place in the house. And when the meal had come to a close, the host would gather all the children and invite them to search for this hidden treasure. This looked like a normal, traditional Seder meal with family and friends gathered together but just around the corner, a betrayal, an arrest would soon follow. In this time of coronavirus, how many of us can't stop thinking about what might be just around the corner? Are you afraid that someone you love will get sick or are you afraid that you'll get sick? Are you afraid of your financial well-being, or are you simply afraid of being alone in this terrifying time. John's world, it seemed, had come to an end as he stood at the foot of the cross just days later. He had left all his loved ones, all his possessions, his entire life to follow Jesus. And now, for three agonizing hours, he slowly watched Jesus Christ, the Son of God, die on the cross. There was no hope. Jesus seemed to even know that this was hopeless. He said to John, this is your mother, and he said to Mary, this is your son, almost a last will and testament of sorts. Despair, it seemed, had triumphed over all hope. For Angel, despair also seemed to triumph over hope. Why go on living, Angel wondered. He secretly bought a shotgun. He considered killing himself at home, but he didn't want his mother to go through the pain of having to find his body. For Angel, there was no hope, so he decided to take his own life, but he would do it at school where his mother didn't have to find him. That was the only solution he could see. On that first Easter morning, when Mary Magdalene showed up early to tell Peter and John they have taken the Lord, 
It was like a knife being twisted. As they ran to the tomb, Peter and John must have been thinking about these words. They have taken the Lord. His body is missing. This was a proclamation of anger, of fear, of hopelessness. Jesus was dead. And even 2,000 years ago, everyone knew dead people stay dead. This was despair heaped upon despair upon despair. Just last year, Angel must have felt like he was walking into his own tomb as he walked into Park Rose High School just before noon on, on May 17th. He walked into the Fine Arts Building with this shotgun under his jacket. The gun was loaded with only one shell. That's all that Angel would need. And on it, he'd carefully written that morning, just for me. The purpose of this shell was clear. But for Angel, something amazing was about to happen. For John, something amazing happened also. When he peered into that empty tomb, what he saw in the corner was a white linen cloth, much like the finest linens that your grandmother has, neatly folded up and placed there. And I imagine that his mind went back to the countless Seder dinners he'd participated in. And at this moment, he may have remembered the invitation to the children that would always come at the end of the meal, go and search for the hidden treasure. And he may have even heard the words of Jesus echoing this, go and search for the greatest treasure, the priceless treasure, come and find me. I am alive, you may not understand this yet, but I am alive. Do you remember what we're told changed in John's heart and John's soul when he first decided to follow Jesus? Nothing. Do you remember what we're told changed in John's heart and John's soul when he saw Jesus perform miracles and he heard Jesus preach? Nothing. Do you remember what we're told changed in John's heart and in John's soul when, when at the Last Supper Jesus washed his feet? Nothing. But at this empty tomb, as John peers in and then walks in, we're told he saw, and at that moment, he believed. He was changed heart and soul forever. He was transformed. Hope replaced all despair. On May 17th, Keenan Lowe, a faithful Christian, and the football coach at Park Rose High School was asked to check on a student, on Angel, who hadn't shown up for class. Moments after Keenan walked into this classroom, Angel walked in behind him. Angel pulled out this shotgun, he aimed it at himself, and he prepared to shoot. And Keenan lunged for the gun, he grabbed it out of Angel's hand, and he handed it to another teacher who'd walked in. And then something shocking happened. Instead of screaming at Angel, instead of shouting at Angel, Keenan comforted him. Keenan said, people care about you. I care about you. It's going to be okay. You have a life worth living, he said to Angel. And then Keenan embraced Angel. He hugged this terrified, desperate young man, and hope overcame despair. That's the promise of this Easter morning, that no matter how badly we've messed up, no matter how broken the world is, no matter how hopeless things seem, God will take you in his arms and say, I care about you, I love you, you have a life worth living. Today, Angel is pulling his life back together. He's rebuilding relationships. He's taking classes again, and he's talking to other students about how even when things seem most dark, most hopeless, most desperate, there is hope. What Easter morning has demonstrated is that life has overcome death, Love has overcome, has overcome brokenness, forgiveness has overcome sin, and hope 
has overcome despair. Easter means that no matter what you worry is most broken in your life, God has the power to transform it and bring about good from it. For John, it took him years to fully put his hope, to fully put his faith, to fully believe in Jesus. For Angel, his most profound despair was overcome by hope and by love. And for you and me, the question on this Easter morning is when we peer into this empty tomb, will we also be overwhelmed by the despair of the world or will we have hope when we hear the loving voice of Jesus say, go and search for this priceless treasure Come and find me. You may not fully understand it right now, but I am alive. Or in the words of a great hymn, the strife is over, the battle is won, the victory of life is won. The strife is o'er, the battle done, the victory of life is won. The song of triumph has begun. Alleluia. 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 The powers of death have done their worst, but Christ their leader has dispersed that shouts of holy joy at burst Alleluia 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 Together let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed we believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen and, seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, from true God begotten, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Father. Through him all things were made. made. For us, for us and for our salvation, salvation he, he came down, down from heaven. heaven. By, By the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, we gather to lift our prayers of praise and thanksgiving on this Easter morning as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for the gift of forgiveness of sin and for the promise of everlasting life with you. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, help us to move beyond our sadness because we cannot gather together physically to worship you. Open our hearts and minds to worship you in new ways, ways that will continue to draw us closer to you and to one another. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We seek your healing grace, Lord, and the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we walk through these times of illness and uncertainty. Strengthen and comfort the sick and suffering, Lord Christ. 
we ask you to pour your healing grace upon all those who have requested our prayers. We lift up to you for healing this morning those on our hearts as we offer their names in prayer silently or aloud. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you are always true to us in love, grace, and forgiveness. Help your whole church to become more like you, growing in love and in service to you. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Be with those who are lonely, Lord, especially those in hospitals and nursing homes who cannot be with their loved ones. Be also with those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Embrace the souls of those who have died and give us confident hope that eternal life with you overcomes death. We remember our loved ones who have passed away as we offer their names in prayer silently or aloud. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Help us in this time of slower pace in our lives to reflect upon and cherish this beautiful earth that you have given us. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Guide the leaders of this nation and bring peace to the world, O Christ. For only you can bring enduring peace within countries and internationally, and only you can bring profound reconciliation between all people. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. I want to thank you so much for joining us for worship online, digitally at St. Luke's today. If you're visiting with us, if you're a digital visitor who doesn't regularly worship with us um, in person at St. Luke's, I encourage you to click the link to one side of me or the other and fill out your name, your email address. We want to thank you for worshiping with us this Easter and we want to keep you in our prayers. If you're a regular member or a visitor, also click on that link and fill out any prayers that you want the clergy to to lift up on your behalf. Once again, welcome to St. Luke's. We're so glad to have you worshiping with us. And um, I pray that you take a moment to prepare for this, this Eucharist, which we will celebrate together.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you in the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My dear friends, for 2,000 years, the church has gone through periods of strife and plague and pestilence. And during these times, there have been periods when people haven't been able to receive the Holy Communion, the, the consecrated bread and wine. But there's a theological idea of spiritual communion, where from your own home, you can participate in this communion spiritually, even if not physically, remembering that Christ is not only present in this consecrated sacrament, but Christ is present with you. So I invite you to join us and say this prayer for spiritual communion as we say together, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Fight for victory.